Hey guys, it's Darwin. So, I just got back from a 130 mile section of the Arizona Trail and I tried a completely different pack setup. Wanted to go ultra light on this trip just because I've never done that type of a hiking kit. So, my overall kit was seven pounds, 11 ounces, and that's without food, water, trekking poles, or the clothes that were on my back. So, let's open it up. We'll break it down, I'll show you guys what I carried, and then we'll talk about what I liked and what I didn't like. All right guys, so here it is. Here's everything. I'm gonna go through each piece individually. Um, later on, I will do a full review on most of this gear that um, I haven't carried before. So if you want some more information on that, um, keep an eye out for those full reviews. So first off, let's talk about the pack that I used. This is the Z-Pax Nero, um, an awesome 35 liter ultralight pack by Z-Pax. So it's just one big main compartment. And then here on the side, we have two water bottle pockets a big mesh pocket here in the front. And if I flip it over, I actually made a little bit of a customizing to it, which is this Z-Pax pouch. Um, in here I kept my chapstick and my little knife and flashlight. And in here I kept my camera and my phone. So I really loved that. Next up is my shelter. So inside of here, that is a Z-Pax stuff sack. Inside of there is a Z-Pax eight and a half by 11 foot flat Cuban fiber tarp um, with the guidelines and everything. And then I have a enlightened equipment recon bivy. So that was my setup, that was it. Just the tarp and the bivy setup. It's the first time I've ever used a bivy in the field. Uh, for an extended trip and I actually really liked it and I will be doing a full review on that shelter system so like I said keep an eye out for that and I'll go more in depth on that uh, the other thing that's in there is a set of Z-Pax Sonic stakes I had 12 of those and then a little Cuban fiber stuff sack that those were inside of down here are my knock outdoor vertex carbon cork trekking poles um, I put them right here because not only did I use them as trekking poles, but I also used them to set up this shelter. So those worked out great. Really love those poles. Next up is my sleep system. So if we go up here, I use the Enlightened Equipment Enigma 30 degree quilt. So the Enigma is essentially just like my Revelation, except for it does have a closed foot box, so it is a little bit lighter. And that is the 7D version which is actually not available. That is a prototype version that I'm testing for enlightened equipment. So they have the 10D and 20D, that is a 7D. Again, I will do a full review on that later. I have a Thermarest Z-Light um, cut to torso length. So that's actually not a full length pad. That is nothing but torso, um, cut to my torso. And then I also use that as my back panel to my Nero bag. So I'll go over that here in a little bit kind of telling you how that worked. And then I have my Sea to Summit Eros Ultralight Pillow, which, you know, that's that's like my main luxury item. I love that thing and it gives me really great sleep. Next up is my cook system. So all my cook system was, was a empty Talenti ice cream soaking jar and a Sea to Summit Alpha Aluminum Spork. Um, I didn't cook. No stove, no fuel. I cold soaked everything. Oatmeal, ramen, beans, um, and I liked it. Liked it a lot. First time going that long with just cold soaking and I really, really dig that. I have an OP sack. That is the 12 by 20 odor proof bag, uh, which I used as my food bag. As you can see, that's pretty big. That kept all my food in there, my snacks, my dinner, my breakfast, and it was perfect. I didn't hang it in a tree because I was in some deserty sections, so it just sat outside of my shelter all night and I had no problems with critters or anything. Next up would be my filtration system. I used the Hydro Blue VersaFlow filter. Um, you guys have probably seen me do a review on that before. I really dug that. And then I used the Knock Outdoor Vecto squeeze bladder, which has a big opening on the top. I did a pre-review of that, but I will do a post-review 
And then I just had a little Ziploc bag that I kept that stuff in to make sure that my stuff didn't get wet inside of my pouch. Next up would be two smart water bottles, or well, one smart water bottle and one aqua hydrate bottle, kind of a generic smart water. I just mainly carried two liters on me at all time. And then I had that knock Vecto bottle in case I wanted to carry two more liters. So a total capacity of four, and that was fine. I never needed any more than that. Next up would be a little Z-Pax um, Cuban fiber ditty bag. This is a roll top waterproof bag. And I actually kept that on the outside of my mesh pocket in my pack. And inside of that, I kept my Anchor PowerCore 10,000 charger. Uh, that worked out really great. Uh, toothbrush, toothpaste, uh, have a thing of shit tickets here. It's got to have some toilet paper. Um, a pair of Skull Candy headphones, a Phoenix EO5 flashlight. Uh, this worked out great. I actually kept this in that little mesh pocket on the front of my pack, along with my Spyderco knife. Great little knife. And a thing of Burt's Bees lip balm because, you know, your lips get chapped whenever you're out there. Also inside of there, I kept my little first aid kit. It also has a sewing kit and a lighter, which I never actually used my lighter the entire time I was out there. Never made a fire, never needed it to fire up a stove. Um, but always need a lighter just in case. I have my iPhone 6S Plus. Uh, I use that as my main app. I use Gut Hook, and then to take pictures, to listen to music and to listen to podcasts when I was at camp. And then here I just have kind of a random bag of cables and cords, an extra battery for my flashlight, charging cables for my electronic devices, a little charging block, and an extra memory card for my camera. And then the only thing that I don't have featured here is the camera that I'm currently shooting on, which is the Canon G7X Mark II. Um, great camera. It took all of my trail shots, all of my video, and I really love that thing. Next up are the clothes that were inside of my bag. So starting up here is the Enlightened Equipment Torrid Apex Jacket. This is brand new to me, and it's brand new to everyone. It's brand new to the market. Again, this is a 7D version. So this version is not available, and this is the hooded version. Um, as you can see, that jacket is great. Um, I have never really been a synthetic jacket person. I've always been a down person. That has made me a believer in synthetic. It is so insanely warm. Uh, I really love that jacket. Can't say enough. Again, I will be doing a full review of that, so keep an eye out for that. Next up would be my new rain jacket, which is the Outdoor Research Helium 2. I used to have the Helium HD, but right before I went, my seams finally started tearing on my HD, my great beloved orange jacket, so I had to let it go. This is my replacement. Uh, this is the regular Helium 2, which is a little bit lighter, and it worked out pretty good. Um, I had no rain, I just used it as a warm layer in the morning whenever I was hiking. Next up are an extra pair of Darn Tough socks. Those are the regular length, or crew cut. Um, I mainly just use those at camp and to sleep in every night. And then I have my Goose Feet Gear Down Socks, which you guys might know, this is another one of my awesome luxury items. My feet get really cold when I sleep at night. It can be like 60 degrees out and my feet will still get cold. The rest of me will be sweating and my feet will be freezing. So I always carry those. Um, awesome, awesome, awesome. And then I have an Icebreaker Merino Wool T-shirt. Um, awesome T-shirt, a little pricey, but I think it's been worth it. That is mainly just a shirt that I like to put on at the end of the day and sleep in. And then I have a pair of Patagonia Capiline lightweight tights. Again, mainly just to sleep in, just to stay in camp at. There was a handful of days where I hiked in those because it was kind of chilly in the morning. And then last are the clothes that I wore while I was hiking. So I have the Columbia Silver Ridge Light Long Sleeve Shirt. Super breathable, it's short sleeve, it's long sleeve, it's sun protective, it is a great shirt. It's vented, super lightweight, really dig this shirt. That has become my new favorite hiking shirt. My beloved Nike Pro Combat running shorts, um, or I guess now they're hiking shorts, which I took the entire length of the AT, 
they've pretty much been on every hiking trip with me. Still going strong, have the liner inside of there. I hiked in the darn tough low cut socks. Um, something new for me, usually I hike in the crew cut. I decided to go with low cut and that worked out great. No liners this time. I decided to go without a sock liner and I had no blister problems this time, which was pretty impressive. Usually I have blister problems if I don't hike with liners, but I was good. Then I have my Ultra Lone Peak 3.5s. This is the second iteration of this shoe that I have owned. I used to own the 3.0s. Loved those. These are the 3.5s. Uh, I did a review on them a few months ago and yeah, they're still holding in there strong, still great. My original buff that I've had for years, um, gotta have that, wore that every day. Used it for just a little bit of everything. And then this super sweet Arizona Trail mesh back hat was the hat that I wore every day. And obviously that worked out good, it's a hat. It could have been any hat and it probably would have worked just great. So the only thing that I am missing from this setup are my gaiters. So I actually spent the night um, at someone's house in Pine, Arizona, and I left my gaiters there. So those are being mailed to me. So I did have a pair of Dirty Girl gaiters. You'll see those on my gear list, the complete written out gear list, but they are not featured here because I'm waiting for them to be shipped back to me. And that is it. That is everything. Super, super minimal kit. Again, seven pounds, 11 ounces, minus what I was wearing, the trekking poles, food, and water. All right, guys, so that was it. That's all that I carried. And the reason I decided to carry that kit is I've just never been that ultralight. I've had a lot of questions from viewers asking me, you know, if I'm ever gonna do a pack setup that's super crazy light, like Lint or Jupiter. So I figured just for fun, just for giggles, I would put that kit together, take it out, test it, and test my comfort level and see what really works for me and what doesn't work for me. And my overall general consensus is it worked great for me. You know, it's usually not my style to go that ultra light, but this pack, the setup, just using a bivy and a tarp, it was great. There was never a time that I was really crazy uncomfortable or I felt like I needed a whole lot more. So that sub eight pound pack really did work for me. Now, would I take a pack setup like this on a PCT through hike? No, absolutely not. Would I do it on a CDT through hike? No. Why? I like a little bit more comfort. I like a full size tent. I like those things if I'm doing a longer hike. Now on something like this short uh, section hike that I just went on, my whole goal was to see how many miles I could put down and what short of a time I could do it. So having a light pack setup like this and having a simplistic pack setup like this was great. It worked awesome. Um, and I would highly suggest anyone trying a setup like this for a smaller hike. But you know, that being said, there were a few things about this setup that I didn't necessarily like and that I would change. So number one, let's talk about my sleep system. As I showed you in the video, I used the Enlightened Equipment Enigma 30 degree. That bag was phenomenal. There's nothing I would change about it. I got down into temps around 25 degrees certain nights at higher elevation and the 30 degree Enigma worked awesome. It kept me warm every night. As I've mentioned before, I'm a little bit of a hot sleeper aside from my feet. So I was plenty warm, especially wearing my Apex jacket, my Torrid Apex jacket. It kept me warm every single night I was on the trail. However, the one thing that I did not like about that setup was that torso length Z light pad. Not because it was torso length, even if it was full length, I'm just a very bony person and I'm a side sleeper. And because I am a side sleeper and I am bony, when I'm sleeping on a pad like this, I just grind into the ground. So I really have to find a super soft pine needle bed to set up on. If not, I'm not sleeping well. And there were a handful of nights where I just didn't sleep good on the trail. Again, it's not because it was a torso length. It not, it's not because I was cold. It's just because it was too thin. So if I was gonna go out and do that hike again, I would take that weight penalty and I would carry a blow up mattress, like the one that I carry all the time, which is the Thermarest Neo Air X-Lite. Is it heavier? Absolutely, it's 10 ounces heavier. This thing was only six ounces for my torso length. So I was able to take 10 ounces out of that pack weight, but was it worth it? 
to me, no, it absolutely wasn't worth it just because I know that I could have gotten better sleep. So the other thing that I would change about my setup and it worked fine and it worked good enough to get me all 130 miles um, is my filter. As much as I do love the Hydra Blue Versa Flow filter, um, it wasn't so great for some of the water sources that I encountered on the Arizona Trail. Now on the Arizona Trail, along with the Continental Divide Trail, a lot of your main water sources are cattle tanks. So essentially what a cattle tank is, is it's just a big hole in the ground that's filled up with rainwater and then cattle drink out of it. So that is your main water source in most places on the Arizona Trail. Now, because cattle do drink out of it and there's a lot of bugs in it, it's really nasty water. There's a lot of floaties in there. So I love the Hydro Blue Versa Flow, but even though the flow rate is better with using the Knock Vecto bottle, it still clogged up a lot and I had to back flush it a lot. So if I was gonna do this section of trail again, I would definitely be carrying something like a Sawyer regular filter, just the regular Sawyer squeeze. Why? It has a little bit bigger of a hole, a bigger opening in the end, so it doesn't clog up as easy. Now, if I was gonna go out and hike the Appalachian Trail again, where there's tons of springs and creeks with really clean water, this would be a great option, but for this section of the Arizona Trail, it wasn't so great. And then the last thing that I would change about this pack setup for that hike was gloves. I decided not to carry gloves. Number one, I'm in Arizona. I didn't think it would get that cold. There were mornings when I woke up where it was 25 to 30 degrees and it was super cold, especially getting started hiking in the morning. My hands were freezing. So I had to do what a lot of hikers do in a pinch and I wore some of my socks as gloves. It wasn't great and I would definitely take a pair of gloves if I was going back out. So did the socks work? Yeah. Was it inconvenient? Absolutely. So I would definitely take a pair of gloves if I was going to do that hike again. So I guess the final question is, would I take this out on another hike? And the answer is absolutely I would. Was I insanely comfortable? No. And whenever you go this lightweight, you're not going to be comfortable. You're always kind of weighing things out. It's always comfort over efficiency or efficiency over comfort. That's just kind of how backpacking works. Now there are a few things from this pack setup that I will use on my PCT through hike, but something like the pack or the recon, no, I won't be using that on my PCT through hike. I will however be switching out my jacket, my trekking poles, and a few other odds and ends that I really liked on this setup. If you guys wanna see a full detailed list of that pack setup, breaking everything down with links to some of that gear, I'll leave it in the description box below and you can go check that out for yourself. If you haven't had a chance yet, go over and check me out on Instagram. I've been posting a lot of new photos lately of some of the things that Snuggles and I have going on throughout the week, plus some pictures from some past hikes, plus a ton of pictures from the Arizona Trail, so go check those out. If you found any value in this video, go ahead and hit that like button. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.